Well, hello YouTube, another glorious day in the shop. That's right. <laughs> so today we have to rivet the skins on. Yep, a lot of riveting. <laughs> it's going to be a riveting day. It's it's a crazy day. No, actually, let me just let me just do this. Man, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> so you guys thought I took a week off. No, we have been in here. And when I say we, it's not me, myself, and I. Actually, I uh, I enlisted the help of uh, of of my my best buddy, my second best. Well, he's my best buddy, Richard, but not Richard. <laughs> it wasn't Richard, and everything. I I brought in Denny, Denny, Denny the machine, and uh, we uh, spent the last week riveting every one of these, and it is incredible. Um, a lot of rivets <laughs> so we got her done we got the skins on we got everything done uh, except for the top I'm gonna leave that open for a little bit because I've got to do some plumbing in here and when I say plumbing I got some electrical work um, for for radios stuff like that I got to put some brackets in um, for the ELT just different stuff so we're I'm gonna leave this open at this time uh, so we can get that in there um, and everything we still have to put in the the center tunnel here for the uh, for the control arm and stuff. But uh, for the most part, we got all of the side skins riveted. Um, the only thing that I will tell you, it is definitely a two person job. Uh, it is definitely a two person job. I, I just don't know how a single person can do it um, and everything, but. One of the tricks that I learned, I want to share this with you. See these edge tabs here? Because they're single, when you clico them in, they're not able, you're not able to get a, you know, they don't, because normally when you run a clico, right, it pulls these tabs tight to the skin. But with these single ones, you can't do it. So a lot of people use like a rubber hose cut. I found that these little black rubber gaskets or washers, um, work perfectly. They're the right distance, the right thickness, um, and everything. It's about an eighth of an inch, two eighths maybe of an inch. So what you do is you set that over your rivet. Now I have smaller ones. These are the large ones, but you set that over your rivet. Uh, you know, you put your rivet in from the other side, you put that over and then you put your bucking bar against it. What that does is it uses the vibration of the bucking bar to suck that tab in. And then once that gets sucked in flush, then you take your you take it off, take your bucking bar and then to buck the rivet. So that's one of the things you got I would say you have to have besides an extra set of um of hands. You just gotta have an extra set of hands. Most of the riveting that we did is when this it was upside down on these saw horses get yourself some good adjustable saw horses as well uh you're you're gonna need that height especially if the guy's up underneath the bench as you guys can see uh we have the chair under there that's where denny lived <laughs> most of the days um some of the other gotchas i'll share with you is there are some let me get this out of the way there are some rivets that are going to be hard to get to. Uh, a good example is this guy right here because of this. So you're gonna, you won't be able to get that. So you're gonna have to use different bucking bars. You should have a set of these to be able to get into those. These are the metal ones, not the titanium ones. Um, this one here worked out really well. We were able to put this one on the edge like that and buck it like that. So those are the little things. You're just going to have to work through them. Um, take your time. Take your time and just work through it. One thing that did help me tremendously is I got a little bit better precision gauge. You guys saw some other, um, uh, other uh, posts about that. With this precision gauge, I put it in line. I set my pressure of my gun no more than 40. And that's when you squeeze the trigger. 
the total pressure is 40 and that was it takes a little bit longer to buck the rivets but you're not jumping all over the place uh of of course i love this mushroom set with the rubber gasket and the and the tape to to keep it from marring up so this is it but yeah it's not uh not a, not real drastic just you know you just gotta take your time i think what we did is um yeah we did a side of night uh yeah we did a side of night so one two three then we did the bottom and uh then we came back and this back section because it's a tight fit actually took a whole day or you know when i say a whole day two to three hours we only try to spend about two hours you know your mileage is going to be different i i find that two hours in the shop i start doing stupid things <laughs> you don't make a mistake and and everything so i i typically two to three hours um especially with riveting um and everything so uh yeah i mean whatever works for you uh you know it, it's totally up to you but when i say a day you know about two hours we probably could have done a lot more a lot faster but it, in this case it's not a race you don't want to mess the skin up as you guys know um well maybe you don't it, you know these skins are expensive to ship they're hard to get uh with the backlogs and everything so you don't want to you don't want to punch through them yeah we had a couple a couple creases i think there's one right here um not too bad very happy with with that and these aren't really creases what the we got another one right here and when we start doing that see here's one here so when we had a couple like bam bam right in a row um that was telling us we were getting tired what that's caused by is when you're holding your bucking bar against the skin you have it angled in and i'll just it kind of drastic you're not holding it flush to the rivet you're doing that and it against the skin so just be careful of that and it doesn't take much These, this bucking bar being tungsten or yeah tungsten i think yeah tungsten this thing will uh will will chew that up pretty pretty quick so another thing i want to talk to you guys about is service bulletins so on the vans rv they will produce service bulletins. You guys as pilots know what those are. You guys that don't know as pilots, let me explain it to you. A service bulletin is basically where the FAA and the manufacturer have found out that there's an issue with the structure. Something has to be repaired. And it has to be, and some service bulletins have to be adhered to right away. Others can be done in the next maintenance cycle. And it depends on the thing. So I'm going to put right there i'll put the service bulletin that we're going to talk about so what the problem is is when i originally did the piece we cut this piece here and i'll put this skin on this is what we're going to be doing today and this this piece goes just like that right well the problem is is that the elevator horns which are those white things right there at the end of the elevators, they swing up. And there is a, 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 there has been a service bulletin that where they can swing up and go past this edge here. They're supposed to stop right here, but they can swing up and go past. And then they can get lodged in this, in this edge. Now, you know, an elevator, that's what pitches your airplane up and down. <laughs> so... And let's, you know, it's got it's very critical. So the service bulletin is that basically there's if it doesn't happen on every airplane, it's the, it's just the way that the angles and the way that the elevator's been put in. There's a process with lining those up, and if you get those alignments just a little a little bit out of alignment, or you don't do that process correctly, you have a potential of having that horn go past this and get stuck you know so it, it it's it's dangerous so think of it this way so this is my elevator let's see if i can simulate it 
So this is the horn and it's supposed to stop right here, but it, it could, it's, it's, it's very thing. So it could actually go past that just like that and get stuck. And then now you're in a nose down configuration and you're going into the ground. Pretty dangerous. So Vans came out with a service bulletin and it came out last year, which this is amazing because I, I ordered this plane in this kit after the service bulletin was out for a year. But they didn't update the plans um, to do that. See how they have that piece? It's still, it's still equal to, or it's right along the edge, just like what we did here. They didn't update the plans. But what they did do is they shipped me the, with, with the kit. They did throw in the right piece to, for the service bulletin, but they didn't update the plans. So you have to read the service bulletins and I, you know, I would think, and I think a lot of builders have made this mistake, I would think that they would update the plans, right? And send you the plans if the service, but no, that is not the case in some cases. So when you get your RV10 kit, go and, and get all the service bulletins. What I've done is I've copied them all down. I put them in a binder. I'm putting them in, I haven't done it yet. I'm putting them in a binder and I'm signing off on them. Just the, the, the know that I'm compliant. Just like you would do on a certified airplane. Um, so let's talk about the fix. Piece is uh, scrap. So the fix is they give you this beefier, much beefier piece of metal. They give you this. this, this actually did come in the kit. So what you have to do is you do it. Now in the service bulletin, they do have you cutting out a piece for weight. Here, the cut, you you can cut, I'm not gonna cut it out. I'm just gonna leave it. It doesn't, you know, I can lose a few more pounds. And what that does is if you look, it, it covers up. It's, you know, a good bit comes over this hole. So now when that elevator comes up, it's definitely gonna hit that and it's not gonna progress past that point. And that's the service bulletin. So I got that piece that came in the shop this morning to get this piece uh, made up and drilled and ready to go. But yes, as you guys can see, it it, it extract. Yeah, it's a pretty good little bit. Now, like I said, Vans does have in their in their service bulletin where you can notch this out because the whole idea the the piece and it's a weight thing. So you can notch this out here and here to save yourself some weight. I I'm just gonna leave it. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to notch it out. Uh, I'll just leave it just like that. And so that's what that's for. Yeah. So another, it's very important that you read those service bulletins. I, I didn't know another, I, a couple builders that I follow, um, with their videos talked about this. There's a couple of them already put this piece in and then went back and said, Oh man, I got to redo it. But yeah, so don't think that just because you've got a Vans RV kit that everything that's current service bulletin wise is current on your plans. You have to you have to read those service bulletins and sign off on them. So so yeah, so I got this paint or this piece here. I'm gonna shoot it with paint here in a minute and get this green, and then uh, Denny and I are gonna come in the rest of the day. We're gonna finish getting this deck plate on and. Um, these rivets here and stuff but yeah it was uh kind of kind of an interesting <laughs> very interesting thing but uh so i wanted like i said i wanted to get this part made today and get that uh ready ready to go i'll probably shoot it a different i don't know if i'm gonna use well i'll use the epoxy primer um i got some cool things with the epoxy so that is actually a good segue so let me uh set up and get ready for painting and then uh, I'll i'll be back in a minute all right, so YouTube, I get my Dunkin' Donuts. I actually asked for sponsorship from Dunkin' Donuts. Um, so here's our epoxy, our one gallon can. Now, one of the things that I learned very quickly is um, it's a pain <laughs> to store these, put these lids back on, do all that stuff. So what I did, I saw another user, another, another, another site. They bought this nice little tool that goes onto the can lid it has a pour spout so you see that so you can do that 
So what you do is you replace the lid, lock this on it, and that allows you to, to mix it and everything um, using this little mixer. And it's called a mixing mate with no mess. That's, that's the other one. So I need to, I, you know, I know it's not toolbox Tuesday, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these on as well um, while I'm here today. And please <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> My bench is a is a disaster. It's a mess. It really is. But hey, it's it's a work. You know, we're working over here. So today, well, you guys know me. You guys know me well enough to know. I uh, I proceed to make a mess, and then I'll go back and uh, clean up uh, clean up after I go through each evolution. So, but let me get this lid off, and uh, we'll get this mixer on here, and then uh, we'll see what we can get done as far as painting goes. Oh, so we got it on there. Yeah, it, it connects really well. The gasket is a, and then look, I can mix up my paint. <laughs> so, so this is, yeah, I, I wish I would've got these before, but these things are awesome. They do make different sizes for different for different sizes of, um, of paint or cans. You know, they make pint, quarts, sizes and stuff. So I, yeah, these, um, <laughs> Yeah, they'll make life a lot easier. Um, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it, uh, um, how that works. And that mixer works really well in there. So, all right, we gotta put the other one on the part B, the activator, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there.